Hello, friends, and again, welcome back to our study of the uh, 12 original apostles. The study is entitled 12 Were Chosen, a study of the original apostles. We're progressing through these apostles. Uh, we're looking at what Scripture tells us about them and what we can learn from them. Now, as we progress through the list of apostles, we, we begin to see less and less actually mentioned about these men within scriptures itself. Uh, don't let this cause you to discount in any way uh, their contributions or, or lessen in any way what we can learn from them. Uh, we'll continue our study of the apostles and, and please understand uh, there's just so much that we can learn uh, from these incredibly faithful men. But we're going to be continuing to look at them. And in this particular lesson, we're going to look at a, cell, a set of brothers that were called by Christ, another set of brothers, uh, James and John. Although given the nickname that leads you to believe that um, perhaps uh, they were contentious men, uh, we see later in life that Jesus took those characteristics that led them to be called sons of thunder and turned them into faithful followers. Uh, this continues to show us that uh, God can use us for His glory. He, he takes us from where we are and leads us to where He wants us to go. And so we turn ourselves over to Him and allow Him to make that transition in us. And we see this in all of the lives of the apostles. And, and so at this time, we're going to be studying James and John, Sons of Thunder, and how this happened in their lives. Well, during this presentation, uh, we're, again, we're going to look at James and John together, and then we're going to uh, look at them individually. Uh, we'll look at what we learn from these two faithful followers of Jesus. Uh, certainly, what we know about James and John, for certain, comes through Scripture. Uh, there's other writings, not inspired. Uh, they, they present some traditional accounts of these men, but we want to look at what Scripture teaches us about these two brothers. Let's start out by talking what we know, uh, talking about what we know about James and John. Uh, they were the sons of Zebedee, a successful fisherman. Uh, James and John were the third and fourth disciples called as we go through the Gospels. They're listed in each of the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. They're not listed in John, as we've already stated. John doesn't list the apostles specifically, but he does tell us quite a bit of information about each of them. And so, the, again, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. And we also, of course, see him listed, uh, these two men listed in the listing of the apostles in Acts. Well, they're fishing partners with Peter and Andrew. Uh, they would be a natural fit for uh, working together, as Jesus said, to become fishers of men. And uh, John and Peter did work together quite a bit in, early in Acts. Well, Christ gave them uh, the name Sons of Thunder or Boanerges, as the text said. This is in Mark chapter 3, verse 17. It's actually the only mention of their names, and yet they're quite known as Sons of Thunder. Uh, of course, that's, a, that's an apparent reference to their boldness, their aggressive personalities. It actually may have been because uh, in uh, Luke chapter 9, verse uh, 51, 56, Jesus uh, had uh, gone to a village and the village, the villagers there had rejected Jesus. And James and John asked if they could bring fire down from heaven to destroy that Samaritan village that had rejected Jesus. So that name, Sons of Thunder, uh, may have come from that. But they also argued over who was the greatest in the kingdom. We read about that in Matthew chapter 20, uh, 20 through 28, and also in Mark 10, 35 through 45. Uh, this, this always strikes me as peculiar because, again, they're standing in the presence of God, and they're, or God, the Son of God, and they're arguing over who's the greatest in the kingdom. And, of course, Jesus uses this opportunity uh, as a great teaching moment about humility and, and about being a servant. Well, that's, that's some information that we know about James and John. There, there's other information. Uh, they're part of the inner circle of, of apostles, uh, along with Peter. James and John were with Christ at special times. 
Uh, for example, uh, they were with Jesus when he raised Jairus' daughter from the death in Mark chapter 5, verse 37. They witnessed the transfiguration in Matthew 17 and 1. They questioned Jesus privately about the future of the kingdom on the Mount of Olives in uh, Mark 13 and 3. They were with Jesus at the Garden of Gethsemane just before his betrayal in Mark chapter 14, verse 33. And then James, of course, we, we know was the first apostle killed in Acts chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Uh, he, uh, is, along with Judas Iscariot, James and Judas Iscariot are the only two that we know how they actually died, how it's recorded in Scripture how they died. Acts chapter 12, 1 and 2 uh, we read where Herod had James put to death by the sword is the word that's used there. All right, well, uh, John, uh, something about him. He's the only apostle not killed, but was persecuted and banished at Patmos uh, where he uh, was able to write about Revelation. So we see some things there about James and John in Scripture. Um, now, compared to his brother uh, and to Peter, uh, there's not a lot that we see about James individually in Scripture, but there are some things mentioned about him, and there are some things that we can, we can understand about James and what we can learn from James. So let's, let's take a look at that now, uh, what we can learn from James. Uh, James was a man of passion and zeal. He learned to use that passion and zeal for Jesus. And passion and zeal would have sustained him during the time. James... Uh, that's where he got that name, Son of Thunder, I'm, I'm pretty sure. So frequently, he was misguided. Uh, misguided in his actions, misguided uh, in, in the direction he was going. But he remained faithful to Jesus. He understood that need. He kept the faith no matter the challenge. And his passion and his zeal transferred over into following Christ, enabled him to remain faithful. Uh, historians feel, again, uh, from, from Scripture that when James was killed, it was about 14 years after the ascension of Jesus. Again, this is not mentioned in Scripture other than the fact that Herod did have James killed, but the, the historians uh, place that time at about 14 years after the ascension of Jesus. It's interesting there in that account in Acts chapter 12, 1 and 2, uh, there's not a lot of information there. There's just that statement that James was killed by the sword. Uh, it, it seems to be part of the overall narrative about uh, the, not only the persecution of the Christians, but also the faithfulness of the Christians, willing to put Christ first, even at the cost of their own lives. And so again, that passion and zeal for Christ that James was able to use enabled him to be faithful to Christ, even to the death. And, and truly, that's because he allowed God to direct his life. He turned his life, uh, although relatively short, into a very powerful instrument that God could use. Well, whatever the characteristics or, or gifts that we possess, uh, what we when we dedicate them to our Lord's service, we certainly can accomplish great things for his glory. And, and, and again, you, you hear me say it, in all things we give God the glory. We learned that from these men. They turned away from self, turned toward our Lord. Well, that's a little bit about James. As I said, there's not a great deal in there in scriptures, but we do learn to turn ourselves over to the Lord to keep the faith no matter the challenge. We use the gifts we have, our personality characteristics, our intelligence, our physical, whatever it is that we have, we turn it over service to the Lord. Let's talk a little bit about John, some highlights of John's time. Uh, he doesn't refer to himself in the first person. He's known as the disciple whom Jesus loved. And now remember, he started out as a son of thunder and trans, uh, transferred later to a disciple whom Jesus loved. Apparently, John was known by the high priest. There's an account in John chapter 18, verse 15. The, uh, Scholars feel that the other disciple, as it's used there, was John. He didn't like to use himself in the first person, so uh, he's saying that in a third person sense. Uh, he, he and Peter followed after Jesus when they went to the high priest's house, and John was able to enter into it. And certainly because of that, he was able to witness 
uh, this initial trial of Jesus. In a very tender moment in John chapter 19, verse 26, John was entrusted with uh, the care of Jesus' mother, Mary. Again, a very tender moment as Jesus is going through his torture and death, uh, he provides for his mother's care by uh, seeing the faithfulness of John and transferring that responsibility to John. Uh, that, that was a, a moment of, of closeness, not only with Jesus and his mother, but also uh, with John. Uh, in John chapter 20, 24, we see that uh, John and Peter were running to the tomb. John arrives to the tomb, the empty tomb first after Jesus' resurrection. Uh, John stops and looks in and sees the empty tomb, but Peter rushes on by him. Uh, again, that's John chapter 20 and 24. John authored five books of, of the uh, New Testament. We have the Gospel of John, and then we have 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John, and then we have Revelation. Uh, John was a very prolific writer and uh, second only really to Paul in the number of scriptures or number of books we have in the New Testament. So John was very active uh, in, in his service as an apostle. We see John in Acts being very active with Peter after the beginning of the church. He helped carry the gospel to the uh, Christians, uh, encouraged the Christians, that sort of thing. So that's the highlights of John's life. James and John together uh, were very faithful and very active in the time. James being the first apostle killed, John the one who had the longest natural life of the apostles. Well, let's take a look now at what we can learn from John. John, uh, within his gospel, just gives us so many highlights in, in to not only the life of Christ, but uh, his interaction with the apostles as they grew. <clears throat> so we see a lot about John. John teaches us about the kind of love that Jesus wants. Jesus wants us to be known as a self-sacrificing love, a, a showing a love that focuses on others, that agape kind of love. Uh, we know John is referred to as the apostle whom Jesus loved. He uses the word uh, a lot throughout his writings. Uh, in, in, some scholars say as many as 80 times we see that word used. Uh, it certainly is a major part of 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John as we read there. Uh, in 1st John chapter 4, verses 7, 8, 7 and 8, uh, John teaches us that love is the characteristic of God. Something else that John teaches us that I uh, spent a minute on, Je Jesus, uh, John teaches us the clarity of being a follower of Christ. John draws a lot of contrasts as a follower of Christ. For example, in, John, in 1 John chapter 1, he says we are walking in the light or walking in darkness. In 1 John chapter 3, verse 9, if we're born of God, we do not sin. Uh, in uh, 1 John chapter 4, verses 7 and 8, if we love, we're born of God. If we do not love, we're not born of God. In 1 John chapter 3, verse 6, Whoever abides in him does not sin. Whoever sins has neither seen nor know him. So you see, John showed strong contrast. If you're a follower of God, this is what you're like. It's not like this. So we see a lot about that. John knew that believers do sin. Uh, understand that. But John's concern seems to be with the overall pattern of a person's life. Uh, that, that, uh, the, that righteousness, not sin, is the dominant principle in the behavior and the life of a believer in Christ, a follower of Christ. We read that in 1 John chapter 1, verses 8 through 10, uh, and, uh, and even moving on into John 1 John chapter 2, verse 1. Friends, I, I am so thankful. I, I praise God all the time for 1 John chapter 1. What a, what a wonderful passage of love and hope that John gives us in that passage. If we're walking in the light as he is in the light, the blood of Christ continues to cleanse us of our sins. That, that's such a wonderful message of hope. 
And, and in that, I think we see the greatest transition in who John was going from that son of thunder, wanting to bring down fire and destroy people to somebody says, who says, stay faithful, stay faithful. As you make that effort to stay faithful, the blood of Jesus Christ continues to cleanse us of sin. So, so that to me is just such a wonderful statement about who John became. And truly, that, that leads into another element of John and that John teaches us about humility. We, just, we see it in these examples of John's writings. John's the only gospel that records the detail of Jesus washing the disciples' feet. John wanted to capture that. He, he wanted to show that as part of that essence of who Jesus Christ was. And, and I think because of that, uh, it really struck John. And, and perhaps moved him as much as anything else. It, it really seems to be a reminder to John himself of, of the need for humility and to grow in humility as a servant. Well, we really don't know a lot about John's death. We, we, we just don't know. It's not mentioned in Scripture. Jesus indicated in John chapter 21, starting in verse 20, that John would not die uh, because of his faith that, that he... Uh, would live longer. Um, most historians believe John died in Ephesus, which is modern day Turkey, uh, in, around AD 98 uh, during the reign of the emperor Trajan. So John lived a natural life. Uh, this enabled him, of course, to continue teaching and, and, and to continue telling the story of Jesus. Now, although he was persecuted with prison and ultimately banishment, uh, John went from that son of thunder to a peaceful death among the brethren that he so loved. <clears throat> uh, we don't have any specific indication of, of really why um, John was granted this lifetime uh, uh, that the others did not have. Uh, I like to think it was a reward because of a lifetime of faithfulness. John continued to grow in his faithfulness, as did the other apostles, but we just see so much clarity of it in the life of John. And that's just an example for us to follow. Uh, again, no matter who we are, when we come to our Lord, our life begins to change as we remain faithful and we will become who God wants us to be. And of course, who God wants us to be is like His Son, Jesus Christ. Well, friends, let me conclude this lesson. Uh, we, we learned that James and John were changed from sons of thunder to faithful followers of Jesus. They learn to balance their ambitions and passions with their desire to follow through with the expectations of Jesus. They took the teachings of Jesus, internalized them, and that changed them from sons of thunder into faithful followers. And, and really, that's a great lesson for us. We look at our lives and, and we change from focus on serving self to focusing on serving Jesus. I like to think about songs that the different apostles would enjoy singing with us today. I think James would have loved that simple song that we sing, the servant song, Lord, make me a servant. Lord, make me like you. For you are a servant. Make me one too. Lord, make me a servant. Do what you must do to make me a servant. Make me like you. I really truly think James would have enjoyed that song. John would have enjoyed it too, but there's another song that I think James, or excuse me, John would have, would have really loved to sing, especially the third verse of I'll Be a Friend to Jesus. <clears throat> that song, that verse says, To all who need a Savior, my friend, I recommend. Because He brought salvation is why I am His friend. I'll be a friend to Jesus. My life for Him I'll spend. I'll be a friend to Jesus until my years shall end. John went from son of thunder to a dedicated lifelong follower of Christ. And, and our Lord granted him long life and he used every breath of that life to praise and to glorify our Lord and to teach others about love and the kind of love that Jesus expects. He was a friend to Jesus. Well, the friends, uh, this, this concludes our lesson on James and John. In our next lesson, we're going to look at Philip and Nathaniel. 
uh, friends to all. I, I really appreciate that uh, you've taken the time to participate in this class. And remember, in all things, we give God the glory. Thank you.